All right, back in the saddle again with my BGP labbing, but I'm starting to see that my routing tables are growing and getting longer. Well, what can I do about that? Well, it's route summarization. Find out more on my CCIE journey. Before we jump in, don't forget, go ahead and subscribe to our YouTube channel, as well as hit that bell for the notifications so that you can see more of these videos as they go ahead and post. Now, let's go ahead and jump right in. So remember that here's the topology that we've been using throughout the entire CCIE, at least getting started with BGP, and labbing has actually been going very well for me. I can actually go ahead and bring up BGP in a relatively short time. Now I keep adding in more and more information and I'm starting to realize something that the BGP, that the BGP table is beginning to grow. So here's an example of here on router one and I know it's beginning to grow larger because as I take a look at the column headings, well that's perfectly fine. That's where it was when I really started to add in something. But then I realized that when I ran show IP BGP, it started giving me another heading. And the reason behind that's fairly simple is because it's no longer able to fit on one page anymore as I do this. So now when I hit it, it actually goes ahead and adds that heading in for me. So more and more uh, information is getting added in. Now in real life, this is a problem, right? The very fact is we wanna keep, of course, BGP tables as small as we can and on the internet, that's exactly what they do. Now inside of our lab setting here, I had to really create routes to help me to kind of be able to show this. So what we're really looking for then when we talk about route summarization are we're trying to actually ensure that all those different networks that are out there, if there's a possibility that we can actually take three or four or 15 routes and kind of squish them together and have them reported one time, that's what we want to do. And that becomes more efficient for the router. It actually allows us to be able to process a lot more information and be able to actually send, well, smaller updates as they come out. So let's go ahead and take a look here because this actually gives us some time to do something. Now at the same time, it was challenging for me and the reason why it's actually very challenging is because it brought back in the idea here of route summarization like I mentioned. And if you haven't been doing route summarization in a while, this is gonna be a time that you're gonna to have to slow down and re-review the idea of route summarization. Now remember, I'm gonna actually use a very simple example for our particular demonstration here, but in real life, right? You're actually going to go ahead and have subnetted routes that are out there, and you want to, of course, be as efficient as you can with those. So as I take a look at this particular list, you can see now in terms of the networks, actually it begins here. Oops, let me go ahead and not do that. Let me highlight the routes here that I can summarize. What we can see, and that's that idea of the sequence numbers, right? 192.168.0, going all the way through 192.168.0.1.2.3. All those, when you can spot them and you can summarize them, that's exactly what you would really want to be able to do. Now, that means that throughout our entire network then, instead of having, well, let's say four routes, we want that to actually appear as one particular route as well. Now, keeping in the tradition of what I normally try and do is I know exactly where these routes are from and I can see over on the right-hand side, actually have them at 65005, which is gonna be router five on my uh, lab topology over here. So those are all being reported off using, of course, loopback addresses here. So that's where I want to do my summarization as I report out. Now, even though in a lab setting, right, uh, you know, we, we have this where we can actually go between different AS, uh, you know, autonomous systems to, you know, kind of show and do the things I want to. In real life, this is probably the only thing I would actually be working on, which is going to be my own autonomous system. So those are things that I can do to really help out the idea of the propagation and to actually summarize those routes instead. So we're going to move over to router five. And this way, I can show you what I did to make that happen. And of course, that means you can practice this too. Let me do a show IP interface brief. And that way you can see that uh, the loopback addresses on the interfaces here, right? Of one through four loopbacks, one through four. I've gone ahead and I made those relatively easy for us. I did use the slash 24 address. So that way we can actually summarize them very quickly. Now, remember that the goal here is simple, is that when I do the summarization, what I'm really changing is gonna be the subnet mask, and then I have to pick one of the addresses 
that's going to actually be able to summarize that for me. Now, the way that I have this laid out, it actually does match up and actually, you know, kind of helps very quickly here. So the good thing is if you already practice this and you're actually really good at it, you're not going to take any time to do it. I had to take some paper and pen and kind of relearn the idea of route summarization again because it's been a while since I've done this. So now, once we get this in place, let's see if we can actually do this. Now, the great thing is when I go then into my global configuration and I do my router BGP and put the proper autonomous system, oops, oh, I did the wrong one, I see, can't see that. So when I actually put the right autonomous system number in, now we want to say, hey, I want to do a summary. Now, of course, inside of BGP, it's not summary. It's going to be the command aggregate dash address. Now, at this point, when I do the aggregate dash address, this is where we begin to say, hey, what is that aggregate address going to be? It's going to be 192.168.0.0. That's the network that I want to aggregate uh, 0 0.5, 1.5, 2.5, I want to aggregate all those networks, right? The uh, 1. Dot, the 2. Dot, 3. Dot, et cetera, underneath this one address here. From this point, it's now asking me what my subnet ma mask is going to be. Well, since I use the slash 24, I know then, just from history as well as my practice that I did, that for me, if I go to a slash 23, that will cover, well, these two addresses. But then if I go to a slash 22, that will actually cover all four of these addresses instead. So that is the subnet mask that I want to do. So then on my subnet mask, that's going to be a slash 22, which is going to be 255.255.252.0. And then we'll press uh, return here and we'll actually go ahead and see what ends up happening. Now, when I first did this, I was like, okay, cool. I like this idea, but it may take a little bit of time. So I'm just going to type in my do show IP BGP here and let's see if anything actually did show up and we can see now that we now have a summary address showing up. There's the slash 22 I was talking about. Let's go over to router one. Now that we have this inside of our BGP table, that means all the advertisements should also carry it. So we're going to go over the, all the way over to router one. That's from five where I configured it all the way up here to router one. And here's the previous time that I ran show IP BGP, uh, IP, yeah, IP BGP. And notice I don't have that slash 22 anywhere. Okay. So if I hit my up arrow, once again, we can now see if that network shows up and that's perfectly fine. It is showing up. I do see its route is reported. The one that's valid and best is reported right here. Perfectly fine the way that, that we want it to. So I have my summary route. I thought, all right, great, that's working. But I didn't really shorten the BGP table. It looked like I actually lengthened the BGP table by adding in the summary route. So I've kind of really defeated the idea here, even though I have an aggregate address over on router five. Well, that's because what we also need to do if we want to actually just show that summary is to make sure that we add in the other option that we need to that will then suppress the other routes on router five. So let's go back over to router five here. And now I'm gonna hit my up arrow a couple of times to bring me back to the aggregate dash address command. And in the end here, when I hit my question mark again, notice that there are more options that are available. But the one that I'm looking for is the second to last command. Now, we can see what it actually says. Filters more specific routes from the updates. Now, this is kind of a key that I really had to learn over a couple of different times. So when we actually do something like this, do summary only, I want to show something before we go back and verify this. So I'm going to do show run and pipe that into section BGP so I can show you what I did here. Now, you'll notice that the network commands, which is how we advertise, of course, in the BGP, you can see all those routes that I summarized advertised in here. 
I tried to do this without actually putting those routes in there and it didn't seem to work out, okay? So you might have to go ahead and advertise those routes uh, into the BGP table first before you can actually get them summarized. So now that we've got that, so that was just kind of a, something I wanted to make sure that you understood if it doesn't work, like you're saying, hey, I don't see anything actually happening here. It might be because you didn't advertise those routes first. Let's go back over to router one. And now let's see what's taking place. So here's the bottom that uh, summarized network as well as all the other networks. Uh, well, actually it's from here. So all those are actually the networks that we're seeing that's supposed to be summarized underneath that slash 22. Now, when we start to take a look, um, it's a little bit better and you can now see it did reduce down the entire routing table now, which gives me one extra line instead of the five or six extra lines as well. By reducing down everything that we can in this fashion, it really does help. Now, did this really work? Well, I noticed that I do see a valid and best route. Well, let's go ahead and verify that this is not just a trick of the camera. Notice I can ping that as well as the other routes here. Just trying to verify. Now, here's where the neat thing comes in, and we've seen this before, but if we go to router five and we run the show IP BGP table here, this is where we'll actually see that we've done exactly what we needed to according to the way that the command works. We're starting to see the S's that appear, and the S tells us that this particular route it's advertised in the BGP, but it's being suppressed as it updates out to the other BGP neighbors that are out there. So make sure you take the time to look at this because we will actually end up seeing this on the lab exam where you may get advertised routes in and they say, look, you need to reduce the idea here of how big your particular advertisements are gonna be. So don't overlook the idea here of using that aggregate dash address command and make sure you actually roll or run over the concept, of course, of actually doing the route summarization too. All right, so that will actually do it for what we actually need to talk about today, which of course was the aggregate dash address command, but there's plenty more to come, so make sure you join me next time.